Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to the first edition of Driving with Mr. Met in 2020. Yes, it is 2020. I am Mr. Met. Today is January the 2nd, 2020, and on today's show, I'm going to recap the uh, the news that broke over Christmas break. Um, that was the Mets signing of Dylan Batansis, um, and uh, I guess it's really all the big news that's broken over uh, over the last two weeks or so. But I want to chat a little bit about that this morning and uh, see what else the Mets might have to do moving forward in this offseason. So I'll get to the Dellen Batances thing in just a minute, but I, I think the, the, the biggest, uh, the most glaring need the Mets had coming into this offseason was uh, the, the bullpen. They had to fix the bullpen. And, you know, the Batances signing absolutely does that, um, without question. He is... Um, has the potential to be a phenomenal, phenomenal reliever. And I'll get to that in a minute, like I said. But first, now that the Mets have pseudo-addressed the bullpen, um, what else do they have to look at? What else do they have to, where, where else do they have to improve? Well, I, I think the, the, the best way to explain this is they don't have to improve anywhere now. I mean, again, the biggest glaring hole from last season was the bullpen. And that's that's been addressed with Batances, uh, although you could argue that there there's still uh, there's still some work to do, and they could use some depth there. Um, two weeks ago, I mentioned Steve Ciszek as a potential fit. I'd still like to see the Mets go out and get him. Um, but uh, it, you know, the bullpen was the glaring need. What else could they look at? Well, they could look to import a center fielder, and they could look for an improvement at backup catcher over Tomas Nito. Uh, I'm going to talk about those two things. Um, I'm going to actually talk about them before I talk about bat- Batances. So, um, and now my train of thought is lost. So that's always good. Um, so, anyhow, um, backup catcher I think is the 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 next weak link um, because Nito is just awful. Um, he's he is not an he's got no offensive capabilities whatsoever. <laughs> And his defense isn't as, I don't know, isn't as great as I think everyone thought it was going to be. So, uh, Nito is an absolute, excuse me, oh, yawn. Nito is an absolute upgrade pos- uh, potential. And the guy that I think everyone's clamoring about is Jason Castro, who's played for the last two seasons with the Minnesota Twins, where the Mets' new pitching coach, Jeremy Hefner, spent his last season. So there is an existing relationship there that sort of mirrors the relationship that uh, Beltran and Batances had, um, which was, as I'll discuss, part of the reason that Batances decided to come to, to the Mets. Um, but I think Castro would be a really good fit, and the more I hear about it, uh, the more I hear everybody else sort of talking about it, I, I kind of agree with it. Uh, the problem is going to be money, because the what I'm seeing, what I've read floated out there, was like two years, $10 million. And I'm sorry, but that's just too much for a backup catcher. I, I just don't think that's backup catcher level um, salary. So uh, if the Mets can somehow come to terms on a shorter length deal um, where there's no two years guaranteed, where it's one year, uh, and obviously for less money than $10 million, but maybe if you do like one year $6 million or something like that, uh, give him a little bit of an incentive to sign the one-year deal. Um, unless you really like him and you think two years is, is good for a guy like, like Castro. I'm not sure. I'm kind of on the fence there. So um, backup catcher, I think, should be something the Mets really look to address right away. Uh, other options include Robinson Chirinos, uh, who, of course, was floated out with the Mets around the end of the World Series as a potential um, as a potential fit, and he's a free agent as well. So um, it'll be interesting to see what the Mets do with backup catcher or if they ride with Nito and the uh, the next guy on the depth chart who is uh, the youngster, Ali Sanchez, So who might just be Nito clone part two. But um, So backup catcher, number one. Number two is center field. Now, we know the Mets addressed center field earlier this offseason by trading for Jake Marisnik. Um, I, okay. Um, you know, 
uh, he, he's, he's not going to light the world on fire, but he's a suitable backup center fielder. The problem with that is that he's not an everyday center fielder, and the Mets really don't have an everyday center fielder. Now, that's not to say that Brandon Nimmo couldn't p- patrol the position and can't can patrol the position. He can. Uh, he just isn't a great defender in center field. So um, the idea there is that the Mets could go out and get, excuse me, thank you running again. First day back to work in two weeks, so what are you going to do? Um, <laughs> no, more than two weeks. Wait, is it? I don't know. It's been a while. Anyway, um, center field, um, the Mets have their backup, right? They have Mariznick as the backup. So you're really looking for a starter, and that's why I think the Starling Marte rumors keep um, keep resurfacing. Um, it's like, okay, well, the Mets don't need Starling Marte. They don't need to trade anybody to get a center fielder. They have Marisnik. And it's like, well, no, they have a backup center fielder. They need a real, or they think they need a real center fielder. I'm not going to argue that, frankly, because I think defense is, is very important, and it's been one of those things that's always been overlooked by the Mets. Um, they just have never valued defense in the last 10 years or so. Um, so I don't hate the idea of bringing in an experienced legitimate major league center fielder. Um, I do hate the idea though of trading away top prospects and top talent for that because I don't think I don't think anybody uh, anybody is gonna represent that significant of an improvement over Nimmo in center field. Um, I mean unless we're talking about like Andrew Jones from the late nineties and early two thousands level defense where he's just, you know, off the charts amazing in center field. Or, you know, you have like a once in a generation talent like that, like Carlos Beltran was in center field. You can get someone like that, it's another story. But Starling Marte is not that. Um, So I'm not in favor of trading for uh, a Starling Marte type and and giving up more farm chips and giving up a potential, um, the potential for uh, Brandon Nimmo to play center field every day. And Yoena Cespedes to be an option in left field. So um, I'm, I know the Mets are looking at center field. I just don't think they really need that. And honestly, I don't think they really need the backup catcher either. It would be nice to have, though. Um, the one thing they met, the Mets did get, of course, was Dellen Batances. They, on Christmas Eve, Brody announced that the Mets had signed Dellen Batances to a uh, one-year, $10 million contract, a weirdly structured contract. There was like a big signing bonus as part of it. I, I don't know. I don't understand how that um, it differentiates between like actual um, committed dollars or, or if, it, if they account for it differently, um, bonus money versus actual salary money. I don't know. Um, but there's also a second-year option. <clears throat> it's a player option, which is sort of odd because if um, Patances has a good year, um, the Mets obviously are going to want him back, and uh, if he has a player option, he's going to opt out, um, and he's going to go and try to get a bigger, more extended contract someplace else. Um, if it were a mutual option, at least the Mets could execute it, and uh, or a team option, rather, at least the Mets could execute it if he had uh, a good season. Um, if he has a bad season, he's not going anywhere. He'll probably stick around because he's comfortable in New York, and... Um, you know, he'll, he'd rather stay here to try to reestablish his value than go someplace else. So anyhow, the Batances signing is a, was an absolute definite and an absolute need that this Mets team had and that they absolutely addressed with Batances. The, the, the bullpen was the Achilles heel last season. And while they haven't really added many other pieces for the bullpen, um, Batances represents a significant upgrade if, asterisk, if... Um, if he's right. How will we know if he's right? Well, we're not going to know if he's right until he gets on the mound. But the the potential of Patances on the mound in the eighth inning, moving Jerry Familia out of the more high-leverage, high-pressure situations, um, assuming that Edwin Diaz, again, returns to form um, and is, is going to be back in his closer's role and not be the complete dumpster fire that he was last year. Um, the This has the makings of a really good bullpen because beyond that, you've got some depth guys like uh, Brad Brock, Robert Gazelman, um, um, Justin Wilson, who was fabulous last year. This is this has the makings of what could be a really nice bullpen, assuming everyone pitches to their abilities um, and assuming everyone is healthy. Uh, And that's a big assumption, of course. And it wouldn't be the Mets if there weren't ifs involved in, um, you know, in, in 
team's potential success. So, um, however, I think that Batances is going to be a huge addition. I hope he has a huge year because if he does, that's going to be really great for the Mets. Um, it's also going to allow Seth Lugo to become a and to continue to hone his skills as an Andrew Miller type uh, relief ace where he can go a couple of innings in the middle of a game, put out a fire at any point that he needs to because we know that he can close. Um, we've seen him do it. We've seen him come in and out of high leverage situations in the past with no issues. So Lugo having um, uh, remaining in the bullpen is, an, is a must. Um, I know he wants to start, but it doesn't matter. He, he's most valuable to this team as a reliever, so... Um, so that's it. That's that. I'm back. Uh, I got to try to get back into the swing of things because I sort of winged it this morning. Kind of forgot that I was going to be doing this. So, uh, so until tomorrow or later this week, uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.